Vasudheva Kutumbakam, World in One Family, is a fundamental belief in India, and it is the reason why the country's diverse religious communities can coexist peacefully. This is one story where India demonstrates its belief by its actions. We are glad you found our channel, where we regularly post interesting historical accounts. Today, we'll tell you about Maharaja Jam Sahib Dykbajazanji Ranyazanji, who did just that when no other country would assist save more than 1,000 Polish children. As part of an agreement struck in August of 1939, Hitler and the Soviet Union planned to launch simultaneous attacks on Poland and partition the country between themselves. The Soviet Union invaded Poland on September 17 after the Nazis stormed Poland on September 1, thus starting World War II. Warsaw surrendered on September 28, 1939. Poland was partitioned into two parts, with Nazi Germany controlling the West and the Soviet Union the East. The Soviet Union occupied Poland until 1941 when Germany launched an assault against Russia. The Soviets deported more than 1,200,000 Poles in the two years following the annexation, the vast majority in four large deportations. According to British historian Simon Sebag Montefiore, the Soviets were just as terrible and tragic as the Nazi terror in the western lands of Poland. The government mercilessly punished those who dared to defy Soviet rule. It is estimated that between 1939 and 1941, they detained and imprisoned half a million Poles, including previous officials, officers, nobles, and intellectuals. Around 65,000 Polish people were also killed by the Soviets. The Red Army and its officers acted like conquering barbarians, pillaging and stealing from Poland. Both occupying forces had no interest in preserving Poland as a sovereign nation or the Polish people and culture. After the German invasion of Russia, the Soviets allied with the Allies and were in a terrible position. Soviets were also forced to release Polish civilians from the camps after Britain's subsequent recognition of Poland's independence. However, these refugees, primarily women and children, had nowhere else to go. Many of these children were orphaned as they had lost their parents in the war. While hiding during World War II, Polish Prime Minister Władysław Sikorski wrote to every major European country, pleading with them to provide refuge to these Polish children but everyone refused, including Winston Churchill. The Prime Minister then coordinated with Russian officials to set up a transit camp for the displaced people in neighboring Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. The camp was in terrible shape. The children were very undernourished and famished. The children resembled walking skeletons. As time was of the essence, Ivgen Yush the Polish consul in Bombay, began working to arrange for these Polish orphans to India by launching a public awareness campaign in India about the fate of refugees in Europe. A ray of rope came from the princely state of Nonagar from where the Maharaja had heard the plight of Polish refugees. The Polish consulate in Bombay brought these kids and women to India via ship, trucks and trains. From 1942 to 1947, more than 5,000 kids were brought to India. The lengthy journey took them through several different countries and ports, and when they finally reached India in the port of Bombay, the British governor also refused to let them in. They were helped by the Maharaja of Nawanagar, Daigvijayzanji Ranyazanji Jadeja, who lobbied the British administration to let the refugees off the ship. The Maharaja, frustrated by the government's lack of compassion and inaction, ordered the ship to dock at Rosyport in his province. The history of Little Poland and India thus began. After their arrival in Gujarat in 1941, the Maharaja had the refugees housed in camps in Balakadi, a village in Jamnagar, where they were provided with food and shelter while also receiving an education and encouraged to maintain their Polish heritage and customs. This Gujarati Maharaja became known as Bapu to the countless kids who had lost both parents during the war. Children, the Maharaja said, you may not have your parents, but I am your father now. The Maharaja recruited seven Polish cooks to prepare meals for the youngsters when they complained about the spicy Indian cuisine. The kids had their own rooms, meals, and health care in the permanent dorms that were built for them. Polish teachers at the camp taught the children in their original tongue because Maharaja Dagvajazanji noticed that the education of these children had suffered a hit with their exodus. Jam Sahib, as he was fondly known, reportedly converted a big guest house in Balakadi into a fully functional school, complete with desks and benches. These refugees remained at Jamnagar for a period of nine years till the end of World War II. Jam Sahib made regular trips to the camps to ensure their well-being. They were urged to return to Poland after the war ended, and Britain recognized Poland's administration. The Maharaja took many personal risks to ensure that Polish women and children found a safe haven in Balakady, Gujarat. Poland's highest honor, the President's Medal, 
was bestowed upon Jam Sahib for his benevolent contributions to humanity. Warsaw has a good Maharaja square named after the Maharaja. Poland also named a school and road after the Maharaja, who was passionate about children's education. Poland has shown its gratitude to the Maharaja in various forms. When Indian students were stuck in crisis hit Ukraine, the Polish administration allowed Indian nationals to enter their territory who were fleeing from war-torn Ukraine. While India has launched Operation Ganga to rescue Indian students from the neighboring countries of Ukraine, visuals of Indians being taken care of by the Polish administration made their way to the media. And that's it for today, and we thank you for being with us this far. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and share it with your friends and family. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it yet.